Hello everybody. I am Dr. Farhan Zameer, an adjunct professor and academic specialist at Biotechnica Bangalore. For today, we will try to address a very important topic and that is a query what we have received from various biologists and technologists. Now the question what bio biologists would ask us is, sir, if I want to understand bioinformatics, is there a necessity for me to learn coding? Or another question from technologists is, so if I want to do bioinformatics, is there a necessity that I need to understand biology? And the answer for this is a bit tricky. The answer is both yes and no. Now, why do I say so? Now, this question of what should I learn, it actually depends on what do you want. So in this particular video, we will try to see the top programming languages which a bioinformatician should know or if he or she knows this, there's an added advantage. Let us try to dwell into the video. Now, we have certain top concerns. Now, what is the top concerns? Before I understand the requirement of why I should learn bioinformatics and what is it I need to understand. So these are the three major things what a bioinformatician should always dwell upon. The first thing is the requirement of the tool. Now, what is the requirement of your tool? What is that you want to analyze? So my dear friends, many a times I tell you that before you start bioinformatics, you need to always put up a big picture. If you are not able to build in your hypothesis, then this becomes very, very difficult. Now, putting up a hypothesis will actually lead a path which will also tell what exactly is your requirement and based on your requirement, you would actually design your requirement of the tool. Now, also the next important component is what exactly is the nature of your data set? Now, whether you are handling a proteome database, whether you are handling a data from genome sequencing or an RNA seq or a microbiome seq or any kind of this high seq, my seq, Illumina, what is the nature of your data plays a very important role in understanding your concerns of learning bioinformatics. Now, the third very important concern is the depth of the data analysis which is required. Now, at the primary stages, it is not necessary that you need to require data at its core. So, you can have a superficial data which will still be will be able to you know analyze certain data which is a or a interpretation which is only required for your basic understanding of the data. Now, these are the top concerns and remember a programming language is just a set of instructions so that you are trying to communicate with the computer and in your case in bioinformatics that you are trying to make the computer understand biology and in response to that biology the computer would run a series of communication within itself and then pop up an answer. Now, this series of background information the computer runs is nothing but a language which would be either a, a syn syntax uh, based language or a semantic based language. So you need to just have a proper communication with your computer. Now, just to uh, give you an example. Now, if I'm able to talk in English, you are able to understand. That is, you know, understandable. But however, Right now, if I start communicating with Greek or Japanese or Latin, so then what would happen? You are being dumbstruck. So there is a barrier which has been built between you and me and the communication is not proper. So hence, to facilitate this particular communication, we both should talk the same language, listen the same language, analyze the data in the same language and interpret the data in the same language. And this happens, this marriage happens between the coder and the computer and this marriage happens with a beautiful communication and this communication is called as programming and in this case it is computer programming my dear friends what makes our communication much more stronger now to have a general information on what exactly are the different modes of bioinformatic analysis we do on a computer programming component, there are this computer programming could be divided into two major components. One is a default pipeline. Now, in this particular default pipeline, what we do is somebody has created a code. I am just a blind user of it. 
but I still know that what exactly is happening into my information. But here what I do is I am not writing any codes. So on a default mode, it is just running or executing my particular program. And this is one major advantage for biologists who thinks that, okay, I know a, a, a small component of what exactly the computer is doing, but I am not trying to code it. I am not trying to give an instruction to it. But this pipeline will help me in understanding or interpreting the data what I want. Now, those uh, programming components are called as already the scripted languages or it is called as the default pipeline. So it is like I put the data at point A and when it passes through point A, B, C, D and E, I at point E, I get the data output, whatever is required, and then I would try to analyze it. So trust me, dear friends, the understanding of this particular default pipeline is I am not scripting anything. I am not writing, writing a code. There is an already a default code which is there, which I am blindly executing it. The second important component is, you know, algorithm driven, uh, scripting and in algorithm driven scripting here I am writing the code I am actually writing a code and then trying to have a proper communication with the computer wherein you know I am not running on a default format wherein I am every point of time I am trying to instruct the computer sentence by sentence language by language command by command we are trying to have a communication and this is called as algorithm driven scripting now with this you know initially there were a lot of languages which was being built up just to have a communication with the computer but however as the biology evolved now people started to use the application of this programming languages in biology. And hence, your Java, which was just a scriptic language, then was applied to biology, and now Java is called as BioJava. The same thing happened with Perl. Perl has now been transformed into BioPerl, and very importantly, Python, which has been a, a huge boom in bioinformatics, wherein Python has now been designated to BioPython. And please remember, all these three languages, when they have been used in biology, they are called as bio programming. Okay, so I have BioJava, BioPerl, BioPython, which still has the foundation of Java, Perl, and Python, but however, this has been applicated onto biology. Now, if that's the case, you would ask me, sir, tell me the top 10 programming languages wherein a bioinformatician should know. Now, I would not always tell that, you know, you need to learn all the top languages. But however, what I'm trying to make you understand is these are the most widely used languages in bioinformatics. Now, it, as I told you, it also depends on what exactly is your requirement. So depending on your requirement, I would suggest you people to read the background on this. There is a manual which is available. This manual will tell you the application of the programming language and application specifically with biology. So depending on your programming, depending on your data, you need to actually develop on the languages. So it is not necessary that every point of time you need to understand all the 10 languages. So we will try to see what exactly is the advantage and disadvantage of each language. So. The top 10 languages are C, C++, then you have Unix, you have Ruby, you have SQL, you have Unix, you have Perl, Python, then you have MATLAB, R programming, and then at the end, there is something called as hybrid languages, what we will talk at the end of this particular video. Now, I thought of making up clusters rather than me trying to tell you everything about all languages there are few languages which are actually primitive in their mode and these primitive languages are you have the c c++ pascal java bash sql and unix now what are these languages used for in bioinformatics? These languages are mainly used for the assembly of a given data. It is also very important in the usage of annotation. The environment or the, the script which is available for this is wide and many a times this is a bit complex 
and hence for a starter or for a beginner it becomes actually very difficult to to write this basic languages until and unless he or she wants to learn the language by itself so these languages at the background i would say that this would help us in understanding more and more fundamentals but remember if you are already in a particular job or you are a postdoc somewhere you have a, you are a research uh, researcher somewhere there you do not have ample full of time to really understand the fundamentals you need to actually execute it so understanding these or learning these particular languages will actually lessen your productivity because they would teach you obviously you would be knowing more amount of the fundamentals but the application or the execution becomes much more delayed and hence if you are a student i would still you know recommend these particular languages so that you can learn and then apply it later in biology the next important language which is uh, to a wide uh, demand is ruby ruby has now become one of the major component in understanding bioinformatics data because ruby enables us to create pipelines so any point of time as i discussed in my second slide wherein we were trying to understand on a default pipeline so ruby is one such program which will actually help in running up you know uh, pipelines wherein even ruby has a lot of style scripts and multiple system commands are available with ruby however so you also have in you know advantage of manipulating your data especially the input and output data could be controlled by the by the researcher so that's another advantage of having a ruby and very importantly it is natively it allows to handle system calls and it helps us to clean up and read the data at a very faster phase and then very very importantly in any kind of a programming language as the programming language has a strong community and the learning resources so any point of time if i don't understand anything i can still go to the library i can still go to my community and then many other you know coders would have put their particular commands or they have put their particular script i can just take the script and run it and if it works great that's a eureka for me now an other important advantage of ruby is it is you know many a times uh, the scientific libraries which are available are are good but however they are very very minimal so this is would be one of the the limitation which actually you know holds me from you know the by exploring ruby on a much greater scale now the widely used by you know by informatic programming uh, language is perl now perl is a syntax language which has been used and it is unintuitive so here it is not a natural language based community so uh, it is a language which is not on a natural algorithm component and also the community standards of perl is not that higher as compared to the other languages so this will be one of my other restriction and many a times to achieve this one single program or one particular code you have multiple ways of doing it so you do not have a single methodology for executing one particular command language for a single command language you have multiple options of running the same command and many a times this can also lead into certain confusions with the beginners and as i told you perl is bit cryptic in nature but however this also has an advantage wherein many of the bioinformatic tools which have been designed to understand biology has been basically uh, uh, you know designed out of this particular language which we call it as perl now the next important and widely used tool is called as python now python uh, it, the syn the syntax which are actually used for python language are very very simple and very very easy to learn and it has a large library so any point of time you do not understand a particular command or if there is a bug or a debug we, what you need to do so the python community or the python library actually offers this particular option so that you can run it for free then then it is a natural language based system which has a central repository which has a central repository which will also help us to understand most of the most of the python scripts and very importantly you have 
ready to use you have ready to use you know kits which are called as nimpy sipy you have scikit learn you have something called as pylab then pysam pybed and pypy tools all these are tools which are very very routinely used for analyzing bioinformatic data now py forms a very very important tool when we are actually analyzing ngs data and then it helps in a lot of cleanup so very importantly when we have this ngs data there are a lot of chimeras which has been developed now cleaning this chimera is something like you know uh, searching for a needle in a haystack so hence if the data is not clean you get the end result is completely disturbed so many a times we talk about garbage in is garbage out so if the data is not proper or if there are a lot of noise in the data it becomes very very you know troublesome to actually go on a conclusion so the the python actually helps us in understanding and cleaning up the data and this gives a very important edge in understanding the expression data and very importantly helps in plotting beautiful plots and which are based on clusters either model or features and very importantly my dear friends python also gives me an edge in designing networks in designing strings so that i can look into one you know gene network and that with then that gene network i can look into the gene gene interaction or i can look into the gene protein integration also so python is one of the most easiest language and it has a huge advantage in bioinformatics now here comes an other tool which is called as matlab now matlab has two options one is you can actually write a script and then run the program or for bioinformatics matlab is like a boon wherein at the 7th or the 8th tab on matlab programming us you know window you have a specialized tab which is exclusively meant for bioinformatics so if i am a not a well trained coder okay so what i can do is i can go into this particular tab and then do a click and play and then i can execute my particular program so matlab gives me an option for the click and play method then it is very hands on so uh, you can just analyze the data in few minutes to you know a certain time depending on the 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 veracity of your data and very importantly this is very very easy when it has been analyzed using matlab so whenever you have a data the analysis of the data becomes very very easy especially with matlab but however the licensed version of matlab is bit expensive and hence having the licensed version in your lab would be bit troublesome now an other important tool or another program which has been widely used for bioinformatics is the r program now r and something which is called as that add on r is nothing but your r studio the r studio is a very important tool for analyzing your rna seq data microarray data could be easily understood and analyzed and processed using r or r studio and then the cleaning up of the data becomes very very easy with r if your data is either it is in high seq either it is illumina my seq or ion torrent it has multiple formats multiple commands to execute it so that you can very easily annotate and assemble the data using r studio now the last uh, programming tool we call it as hybrid now why do we call it as hybrid hybrid is a terminology which has been used for programming languages which is not just run on one programming languages so this is a marriage of many programming languages together example i have something called as bioconductor now bioconductor is an hybrid programming language or a tool which is been as a derivative of python and r and many times it uses you know perl or r so so this is where you can now you know put up a scripting language and then you can also enhance that scripting language to a default language or from this default language you have always an option to actually uh, write a command for a unique feature what you are expecting out of your data now all this can come as an add on 
In the hybrid, especially in the art studio, we have more than 9,000 packages which could be an add-on to the R programming. So this 9,000 packages, any point of time could be analyzed for various kinds of features or scripts on bioinformatic data, wherein this could be a major boon in analyzing your NGS data and very importantly, in cleaning up the NGS data resulting in the clustering analysis or the analysis or interpretation very beautifully depicted using a lot of graphical formats and plot uh, windows. Now, hybrid also gives you an edge in analyzing your microbiome data. Now, most of your uh, you know, mother or kind, which is a, a tool which is normally used for running up your microbiome data is again based on this hybrid programming. Now, at the end, I would come to the conclusion asking for like whether a bioinformatician should learn uh, coding languages or programming languages or not. Again, I tell you, my dear friends, if you learn, you have a great edge, you have a great control over your data, and any point of time, your analysis becomes, your interpretation becomes much more better, and which is easy for you to understand, and which can give a great boon to the scientific fraternity. Thank you very much for watching this video. So if you have any uh, comments, or if you have anything to add on, please leave a message, leave, please leave a comment, and then we will also try to incorporate much more videos like this so that we can together flourish we can we can together have a better understanding of the science so please remember at biotechnica your success is our priority thank you very much